Bightley, please. Thank you. And the next item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 14486 in the name of Edward Mountain on Fairer Hospital TV charges. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons and I call on Edward Mountain to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm very pleased we're having this debate at this time. And I'd like to thank all members from other parties who supported my motion, particularly David Stewart, Monica Lennon, Neil Finlay, Mike Rumbles, and Liam MacArthur. I am, however, disappointed that no SNP politician has signed my motion. I'm not deterred, though. I believe that despite their reticence to stand up and be counted, that the majority of them will support me in my wish to, to end unfair hospital TV charges. I really believe this is a cross-party issue that should unite us all. Now, since I've raised the issue of TV charges, I've received a huge amount of interest in this issue, not only from across the Highlands, but also across Scotland. And let me welcome at this stage those who are following this debate live on, B on the BBC. Um, for those of you that are in hospital and are having to pay to watch this debate, hopefully your parliament can make a real change on this issue. Now, I've decided to raise this issue having visited a friend in Ragmore. He has spent all his life in the countryside, which makes his time in hospital really difficult. After two months being confined to bed, he is longing to go home. And as I chatted to him, I saw the bedside TV unit and tried to console him. At least I said he had something he could watch. His response was a laugh. And he said, you've got to be joking. The costs for using that thing are ridiculous. Now, those of you that in this chamber who have avoided being in hospital for a long period of time, it's hard to explain the boredom and the routine of eating, sleeping, and being treated create. I remember sitting with my father during the last weeks of his life. He would have welcomed the distraction of the TV. And some five years ago, when I was in Dr. Gray's in Elgin, I used to have to wander off the ward I was in to find a TV to break the monotony of lying in bed. And I gave up the amount of times that I received a rebuke from nurses for wandering off the ward to watch a TV that wasn't there for patients. Now, in the Highlands, where many patients get moved from their communities to Rague Moor, visits from their families become difficult. And this creates a feeling of social isolation. Being able to watch local news and general TV helps to remove this, which me makes me believe that TV is an important part of hospital life and recovery. Now, some people might think it's odd for me to stand here and criticise the provision of a service by a private company. But let me be clear, I don't believe, and I will never believe, that we should ever support a private contract where it compromises the service an individual receives. And that's why I'm standing here today. I do so because, to put this simply, the cost of bedside televisions in NH Highland, NHS Highland is extortionate and prohibitive. No one can justify a charge of £9.90 a day especially when you compare the prices with online provision of films and entertainment. Firms supplying these services charge less per month than is charged in a hospital per day. Now, I don't want to be accused at the end of this debate of mincing my words here. I believe the hospitals have a captive audience, and I believe that charges for bedside TV for short-stay patients is a rip-off, and for long-term stay patients, is just daylight robbery. Now, this has gone on for way too long. Health boards like NHS Highland signed an exclusive contract for 15 years. And we should not forget that all of the revenue raised from bedside TV goes to the suppliers, and the NHS receives nothing, not a penny. And the Scottish Government should make sure that this never, ever happens again. With the contract for bedside TV coming up for renewal in NHS Highland in June 2019, now is the time to secure a better deal for patients. That's why today I'm launching a petition for the campaign for fairer hospital TV charges. And it reads simply, we believe that bedside television in hospitals is vital to prevent social exclusion 
and feelings of isolation of patients. We call on local health boards to secure a fair deal with companies providing bedside television and to provide free Wi-Fi for patients in hospitals to allow them to access television via streaming services. And I'd urge all MPs to go out and get people to sign up to this today if we really want to extend the extortionate fees that are being charged at the moment. Now, I'd also like to take a few moments to welcome the promises of the Cabinet Secretary for Health that, that she made only last week. She promised to work with NHS Highland to ensure that patient TV is more affordable. She also promised to identify the feasibility of free bedside entertainment to be supplied via Wi-Fi across NHS Scotland. These promises are a huge step forward, but they need to be delivered. But that's not the whole solution. Offering free Wi-Fi assumes that every patient has access to tablets and laptops to use these services, and to me that is a big assumption. We also need to question how to make more of these devices available to patients who don't own them. The Scottish Government and our local health boards need to think outside the box on how to address this issue. Presiding Officer, hospital charges make dip, would make Dick Turpin blush. They're not only highway robbery, but daylight robbery on a captive audience who are often vulnerable due to their illness. The time is now right for change. It's right for patients, it's right for our health board, and I believe it's right for Scotland. Yeah. Thank you. We move to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. And I call Gordon MacDonald to be followed by Monica Lennon. I thank Edward Mountain for bringing this debate and giving me the opportunity to speak on the subject of hospital television charges. As someone who spent two 10-day spells in hospital back in 2017, I found that being able to watch television in between spells of reading helped to offset the boredom that, that Edward Mountain spoke about uh, and helped me in recovering uh, in the hospital ward. It made my stay more bearable by taking my mind off my medical issues. During my time in hospital, I was admitted to St John's in Livingston and then the Western General in Edinburgh, neither of whom charged for watching television. A Freedom of Information request to Lothian Health Board in 2015 stated that only patients in the PFI-funded Royal Infirmary in Edinburgh had to pay to watch television, a contract that was signed back in 2001 with Patient Line, now Hospedia, prior to the hospital opening. They confirmed that no other patients in acute hospitals in the Lothian area were subject to television charges. Presiding officer, I agree that the amount charged by this company of up to £9.90 per day to access bedside television is prohibitively expensive. Comparing the cost of the 25 channels provided by them with what is available from a major satellite television provider who charges £22 per month, for accessing hundreds of channels highlights just how much patients are being ripped off. The Consumer Association, which carried out a survey back in 2011, where it found that hospital bedside entertainment systems are expensive and confusing for patients, with 61% stating they were very poor value for money, and a third found them confusing to use. Some patients were also unhappy about the quality of the service and the inflexibility of buying credits in order to watch television. Of course, this issue of expensive bedside television provision does, not just, does just not relate to a number of hospitals in Scotland. Hospedia provide the same service to 160 NHS locations or 75% of acute NHS hospitals across the UK where over 65,000 patient bedside entertainment units are installed. The UK government has made no steps to cancel these contracts. Hospedia claim they are the market leading provider of bedside communication and multimedia services to hospitals in the UK with up to 10 million patients a year making use of their services. The company was taken over in 2010 by Los Angeles based Marlin Equity Partners. In this instance, 
the level of involvement by this foreign owned company in our National Health Service cannot be blamed in the introduction of PFI contracts in 1992 by John Major's Conservative government or their continued use by the subsequent Labour government, resulting in PFI contracts costing the US, UK public purse $110 billion to date and with future payments being made up to the 2040s costing another $199 billion. No, this situation developed under the last Labour government, who stipulated that across the UK, all hospitals should offer a bedside television and telephone service. The difficulty was that they provided no funding in order to do so, and individual health boards or hospitals had no option but to enter into 15 to 20 year contracts with companies to provide the service funded by patients and their families. Thankfully, a number of these Hospedia contracts in Scotland are ending during the course of this year. I welcome the NHS Scotland is investigating the feasibility of free Wi-Fi enabled bedside entertainment units. It is great news that patients in NHS Lothian will be trialling the new free patient service, including access to video streaming. And if successful, I look forward to many more health boards across the UK following Scotland's example. Monica Lennon, followed by Miles Briggs. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Edward Mountain for bringing forward the debate. Um, unfortunately, my colleague David Stewart is unwell this week, but he was very keen to speak in the debate today. And I hope that Edward Mountain's friend has also made a, a good recovery. When we think about the pressures on the NHS and the day-to-day -day needs of the service, I suppose hospital televisions isn't the thing that springs to, to most people's minds. But when I saw that, that Edward Mountain has secured this debate, I was quite keen to speak because my own mum has spent um, a huge amount of time in hospital, actually, recently, in, in and out. And uh, even this week, she's been in a, a side room on her own. So having access to a television or your mobile phone or the outside of the world, it's really, really important. And what I've learned about hospital TVs uh, this week is that it does vary right across the country and indeed within health board areas. So whilst uh, my own mum, who was a patient in Heer Myers uh, Hospital in NHS Lanarkshire, you don't have to pay to use the television, but it's absolutely tiny. You have to be about eight foot tall to reach it and there's no remote control. So I had to warn my mum several times, don't you dare stand in a chair to try and change that. And of course, the nurses are rushed off their feet. So patients don't want to disturb uh, the nursing staff to ask them to turn over the telly. But I thought it was really getting a bit much when I phoned her and she said, I'm trying to watch Coronation Street. And it was taking her two hours to watch it on her phone because the Wi-Fi was so poor. Um, so I think there's lots of pressures on the NHS, but when we know that people who tend to be in hospital are people who are very sick, it's our older citizens that tend to be there for longer. I was visiting Edinburgh Royal Infirmary recently and I was chatting to um, senior nursing staff about delayed discharge and they talked about people who have been in hospital for, for as long as 12 months, um, a year longer. So for someone in that situation, access to a TV, uh, preferably a free service, is absolutely vital. Um, Gordon MacDonald has set out some of the historical context, which I think is important, but the government's been in administration for 12 years. This is 2019. We know how important it is for people to to be well connected. I welcome the government's uh, work on the, the strategy on tackling loneliness and social isolation. When people are in hospital, it's an extremely vulnerable time. And having access to TV, it's not just about watching Coronation Street, as important as that is, but people need access to Wi-Fi to be able to use their phone because quite often people are coordinating you know, what's happening in their life, um, putting arrangements in place for family members, perhaps they have caring responsibilities. So I hope that we continue to look at these things. I, I'm interested to hear about the, the pilot scheme and more about it, the pilot in NHS Lothian. Even in Lanarkshire, where I'm an MSP, there is that variation. So though um, in here in Myers, there's no charge to watch the very small and high up televisions, patients in, in Monklands do get that 
service from Hospedia, um, and it's not as expensive as the charges that Edward Mountain mentioned, but th there are people in my um, region who just simply can't afford even two, three pounds a day. So I know from her own um, clinical and professional background, the, the minister will probably have lots of knowledge on this subject and will, from her um, expertise in mental health, will know the importance to make sure that people don't feel uh, lonely, uh, isolated, um, and don't feel that they're a burden when they have to ask um, staff to come and change the channel so they don't miss Coronation Street. So I'm interested to hear what the minister has to say. I'll look at Edward Mountain's petition. I think there's something here that we can all work together on. So I thank Edward Mountain for bringing forward this issue. The last of the open debate contributions is from Miles Briggs. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by congratulating my friend and colleague Edward Mountain for securing this debate this afternoon and for all his campaigning across the Highlands and Islands. Edward Mountain is rapidly uh, becoming the voice of the Highlands and Island NHS in Parliament. I think that's a positive thing. And in addition, I know that patients and clinicians in the Highland are grateful for his work and his ongoing support. Having access has already been outlined to bedside television and also telephone services is something which many of us will have received letters and emails from constituents and their families who have spent any period of time in hospital. Two family friends of mine recently spent time in both Nine Wells and in Dundee and Forrester Hill in Aberdeen. I visited them both and it was clear to see the difference in the patient experience in these two hospitals. And it's clear from today's debate that there is a, there is a in terms of provision of television in hospital, there is a real postcode lottery across Scotland. From Forrester Hill in Aberdeen, where patients have access to bedside television to Nine Wells, where they do not. And it's clear, as already been outlined, how loneliness, boredom and isolation in hospital is impacted by people not having access to these services, especially as more of our hospitals look to move towards single patient rooms. Long stays in hospitals can be dull for patients, so access to bedtime television, uh, bedside television, probably at bedtime, and Wi-Fi is important for letting patients keep in touch with loved ones and know what's happening in the outside world. I welcome, as Edward Mountain's already outlined, the constructive comments which the Cabinet Secretary has made to date with regards to the situation in NHS Highland and the need to secure a better deal for patients splashing out extortionate fees to watch television at Ragmore Hospital in Inverness. And I want to use my time today to also highlight the situation in my own health board of NHS Lothian. At present, hospital bedside television is provided by Hospedia with a basic bundle costing £17.50 for two days and amazingly costing £5 for just two hours. I hope NHS Lothian will look as well as how in the future they can get a better price achieved for patients in Lothian when the contract is next up for negotiation. However, it's also important during this debate that we look to the future and increasingly, as has been outlined, patients are bringing their iPads into hospital and there's potential for those who don't have this technology to be given it while they're in hospital. Following research by the Scottish Conservatives, we discovered that NHS Lothian was the only health board in Scotland not to provide free Wi-Fi to patients. Now, this is an issue I've campaigned on since I was elected and, uh, and have called for Wi-Fi to be made, made available to patients in NHS Lothian hospitals. The pilot of Wi-Fi at St John's Hospital in May 2018 was a real success and was used by 4,635 different devices uh, during that month. NHS Lothian told me that the Western General Hospital will have Wi-Fi rolled out in August and the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh plans to have Wi-Fi by the end of what was last year. I've asked NHS Lothian today for an update on how this has been delivered, but it's an important aspect of how we make sure that Wi-Fi and patients have access to that. And I welcome the fact that the Health Board have acted on that. And I'm pleased that NHS Lothian have also committed to have this operational Wi-Fi in place when the new Royal Hospital for Children moves to the new site and hopefully opens later this year. So I hope today's debate can look at the opportunities for NHS boards to renegotiate these bedside television contracts when they're not next up for renewal to ensure the best possible value for money for patients and families across Scotland. Scottish Conservatives support a review of the provision of television across NHS Scotland's hospital estate, and I hope this is something which the Scottish Government Minister, when she's responding, will look to undertake with health, health boards. As has been outlined today, no one wants to be in hospital, but when they are, we have a real opportunity to make sure that that is not full of loneliness and boredom, and having access to television is part of that. Thank you. 
I now call Claire Hawkey to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. I would also like to add my thanks to Edward Mountain for bringing this issue to the Chamber um, and for the opportunity to take part in this debate. Um, this enables us to update the Chamber on our plans to enhance patient experience across NHS Scotland. As we've heard um, from the several speakers, NHS Scotland's patient entertainment services currently vary dependent on location and the specialities of the hospital sites. Each NHS board provides free access to televisions and communal telephones across their hospitals, either at ward level or in day rooms. And in addition to this, some NHS boards, including NHS Highland, as we've heard, opted to contract out the provision of entertainment to Hospedia, who provide bedside entertainment to patients on a pay-as-you-go basis in addition to these communal telephones and televisions. The Hospedia contract term is 15 years, during which time Hospedia provides and maintain bedside entertainment systems. Patients are charged to use these facilities and, as Mr Mountain correctly stated, the NHS boards receive no income for providing this service. There is no provision within the contracts for early termination. As such, early termination would have to be uh, via negotiated settlement, which would likely be prohibitively expensive and divert funds from frontline healthcare. Would While daily... Yes. Edward Mountain. Um, thank you very much for, for clarifying that, and that's exactly as I understood it. Could you confirm whether this uh, uh, government and previous governments run by the SNP have actually tried to look at buying their way out of their contracts? And if so, the results of that. Claire Hawkey. Um, as, as I've stated already, these contracts are actually negotiated by the individual NHS boards. While daily equivalent charges can be reduced by purchasing longer term packages, I agree that these services need to be reviewed and the Scottish Government therefore expect all NHS boards to assess and adopt a patient-centred approach on the expiration of these contracts, consideration of both value for money and importantly the patient experience. We recognise that televisions provide respite to many patients whilst in hospital and we should also recognise that technology has moved on since these contracts were introduced as well as to acknowledge that the importance of technology in enabling patients to remain connected to the outside world. And this is particularly important for patients who are admitted into hospitals for lengthy periods of time to help prevent feelings of isolation and loneliness and to allow patients who are able to continue their work or studies if they wish to do so. With this in mind and the prevalence of mobile phones and tablets, a more effective policy may be for NHS boards to allow access to free Wi-Fi for patients to connect to online uh, services through their devices. NHS Lothian is currently in the process of piloting patient and visitor Wi-Fi throughout their major acute sites. And this was stimulated by receiving patient feedback that would often highlight the lack of Wi-Fi and suggested that this would improve their experience whilst in hospital. NHS Lothian's endowment funds, Edinburgh and Lothian's Foundation Trust, has supported this project and is uh, providing additional funding to enable the board to purchase a large Wi-Fi package. At St John's Hospital and the Western General Hospital, patients have been able to stream live television, watching on-demand box sets such as BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, All4 and My5, and to sign into any accounts that patients purchased for at-home use, such as Netflix, BT Sports and Sky Go, and they can be watched on personal devices. In addition to media streaming, this provision of Wi-Fi has supported connectivity with the outside world and reduced isolation, which, as we've heard in various contributions around the Chamber uh, this afternoon, is a concern for patients while they're in hospital. And for example, patients and visitors are now able to communicate using messenger services, emails, social media without worrying about limits and charges associated with personal data packages. They're able to access news websites to keep up to date with current affairs and continue the running of their daily lives, such as paying bills, working remotely, online shopping and so on. I acknowledge that other NHS boards may not have the same level of endowment funding, but again stress that all NHS boards should balance patient-centred options with value for money. The Cabinet Secretary for... Is it close? Monica Lennon. I'm very grateful. <coughs> it's just a, a really practical point, because when I made the comment about um, my mum 
not going up in a chair to turn over the TV. It was a genuine concern that some people might overstretch themselves or stand on a chair. And um, I've been told that over the years, all the remote controls and hearing miles have disappeared. I know you have a local interest too. Is there something that we could do to ask NHS Lanarkshire to look at that in particular? Because I know you get like universal remote controls, but it's a very simple thing that could make a difference and prevent people from injuring themselves. Claire Hawkey. Uh, I thank Monica Lynn for that intervention. I agree that you know NHS Lanarkshire should look at that, particularly if that is a health and safety issue. You know, uh, we, we certainly don't want staff or patients or relatives to be falling well in hospital. Um, unfortunately, over Christmas and New Year, I myself spent a considerable amount of time visiting my father in hospital, so I appreciate how important it is to have access to TVs and to have entertainment that, that is there, and, and at that point in time was free, and he was able to access his television through touching it rather than through remote control. The Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport announced last week that she expects NHS Highland to be actively considering free Wi-Fi services or other suitable alternatives to the current Hospedia contract. And we recognise that Highlands and Islands are subject to inconsistencies in terms of internet provision. And it's therefore important to ensure that any option selected in terms of future patient entertainment has the appropriate infrastructure in place to support it. This doesn't mean that the Scottish Government would be supportive of NHS Highland taking out a further 15-year contract with Hospedia under the current terms, and it's expected that the continuation of any such contract should be an interim solution on the basis of maintaining services. We are in agreement with Mr Mountain's request for all NHS boards to review bedside television contracts when they are up for renewal, and we would go further than that and stress that it is our expectation that boards do not simply renegotiate existing contracts, but consider all available options, putting the patients at the centre of any decision made. In conclusion, the Scottish Government is in agreement with Mr Mountain that any charges for bedside televisions in hospitals must be proportionate and affordable. And in addition to striving to reduce or eliminate patient charges, we urge boards to explore options for putting in place services that will provide more than just television and that will keep patients connected to their friends and families and to their lives. That concludes the debate and this meeting is suspended until half past two.